morning everybody so I thought I would do my first vlog today uh, seeing as this is now week three of being stuck in the house in quarantine so I'm here with this one hello so this is me literally dressed and made up for the first time in about two weeks. Um, I thought I would get some routine in my life again. So set an alarm this morning, got up, got showered, I've washed my hair. So I'm feeling like an actual human being. So first thing I need to do this morning is make my list in my bullet journal because I need to be productive. So I'm going to do my list. And then I can tell you all the books that I'm planning on reading this week and today. So let's do that now. So this is my current TBR situation. Um, I was planning on doing Simon's um, book hibernation readathon and failed slightly. So this was my TBR for that. So I did get about 200 pages into this one, yeah, 213 of The Paying Guests by Sarah Waters, so I will be continuing on with this today. Um, this was for the prompt, um, a book by one of your favourite authors, so I have read all of Sarah Waters' books so far, and this is the last one I have to read, so I think that's why I've been putting it off, because then I'll have no more of hers to read. So this is the priority. I did finish Weather by Jenny Offal yesterday. Um, for that readathon as well, which was for the short and sweet prompt. Um, and then the other ones on my TBR were these three. So these are probably what I'm going to be picking up in the next few days. So we have Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, uh, Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, and The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. So those are my plans. I also have down here at the bottom, this is my collection of women's prize books um, that are on the long list this year. So I have read a couple so far, um, like Weather, as I mentioned, and Red at the Bone. I've also read Girl, Woman, Other, but all of the other ones I still have to read. So I might pick up one of those as well. Um, so yeah, that is my plan. But first things first, this one and write my list. Let's go. Okay, so I've made my list for the day. Here it is. Okay, so I have quite a lot of chores in the house to do. I want to go for a walk today. I want to paint my nails and I need to set up my April bullet journal spreads. I also did this spread last week where I tracked my reading. So yeah, this was last Monday to Sunday um, and you can see I like made such a big effort to finish the books I was in the middle of on Friday to be ready for the readathon on Saturday to Sunday and completely failed so Friday was an amazing day but not so much the rest of the week so I think I'm going to do this again for this week over the page and then I need to set up my April monthly situation but I'm going to start today before I settle down to read with a couple of jobs because I've taken forever to get ready and it's already 12 so yeah let's go Okay, so I thought I would do a little bit of a reading update with you guys. So I've just reached part two in The Paying Guests. Um, so I'm like just over 200 pages in on page like 230. Um, so if you don't know, this book is Sarah Waters' most recent release. Um, and it's set in the 1920s, 1922. 
um, and I watched an author interview with Sarah Waters um, before I started the book and she said that she basically wanted to write a book um, in a period that she didn't know so much about. Um, I think a lot of her books are set in the Victorian period so she wanted to write something different and I think the 1920s is a period that a lot of us when we think 1920s we think like roaring 20s we think of flappers the great gatsby that sort of thing and she wanted to write more of a real sort of raw depiction of what the 1920s looked like for you know the sort of lower middle class um in the suburbs of London. So yeah, this follows uh, Mrs. Ray and her daughter Frances, who are, um, I guess, middle class, um, but coming out of the war, they have lost a lot of their um, income and they've lost um, the men of the family. So it's just Frances and her mother left, living in this big house. Um, they don't have any servants anymore and they decide that to help them with um, the bills and to help them pay their way that they need to get some lodgers, the paying guests of the title. So um, Lillian and Leonard Barber uh, move into their house in the first chapter um, and the story basically goes from there. Um, the focus is really on Francis's relationship with the couple, specifically Lillian, um, the wife and... Um, it slowly becomes clear that this is um, a love story between the two women. So yeah, I literally just got to the end of part one, which was, I don't want to give anything away, but this is the first sort of um, physical encounter that the two women have um, that kind of like kickstarts their relationship going forward. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, I have to say I'm loving it but I'm not as invested in this story yet as I was with some of her others. I think so far my favourite of her books are Tipping the Velvet which is her debut and Fingersmith um, and I think both of those, I don't know, I just remember when I was reading those two novels being just really really invested in the relationship whereas this one I think because I knew where it was going and I don't know. Yeah, I just don't have that same feeling. But only 200 pages in, so we will see where it goes. This is like a 600 page book, so I am not quite even halfway yet. So yeah, enjoying it so far and I will update you when I get a little bit further. But I'm thinking that I might need to go make myself some lunch because I'm getting quite hungry, but I don't know what time it is. I think it's only like not even one o'clock yet. So I don't know. I might just carry on reading, might pick up another women's prize book just now rather than carry on with that one we'll see but i'll let you know what i end up doing Hey everyone, it's quite a bit later now. Um, I've been quite a bad vlogger today, but first try. Um, oh my god, so what has happened? I painted my nails, so I feel nice and put together now. Um, I had to go on a work call actually as well, which took like half an hour. And I've done all of my jobs around the house, so I feel like a very productive person today. Um, which is good. 
So we did try to go for a walk earlier and one of our cats followed us like pretty much all the way um, up the hill so we had to turn around and come back because he was getting exhausted. Um, I think we maybe need to buy him a lead and just take him on walks because yeah he really just wanted to come with us so I'll go and find him later and show you him. I think he's conked out somewhere in a corner sleeping. Um, yeah I think I'm gonna sit now and read for a little bit and then I need to start thinking about what I'm gonna do for my dinner tonight. I think I'm planning on making a risotto so yeah that's the plan. Settle down for maybe an hour and do some reading and then make some dinner. <laughs> a lot nicer in a system like this. Uh, they really did a big job with that cooler, but it's not something that I would spend money on if you already have a decent Hyper 212. It doesn't look like there's a lot of intentional direction for a color scheme here. It kind of just looks like you picked the parts that you wanted, and they all happen to sort of be uh, neutral tones, black, gray, or white, which looks perfectly fine. It actually looks really good, apart maybe from the power supply stickers that I would suggest we're doing if you were looking for a cleaner overall look, as this case is much older, it doesn't have a PSU shroud, uh, let alone the tempered glass side panel, Hello, I'm back. So I managed to get a good chunk of reading done in The Paying Guests. I'm now on page 305, so I've passed the halfway mark officially. Um, I am really enjoying it. I think pretty much the last 50 pages, what I've just read of part two, um, is just exploring Francis and Lillian's relationship a little bit more. Um, a little bit more physically so it definitely gets a bit racy in places um, but it's good it's definitely kick-starting the love story a bit more um, so yeah I think my goal for today is to get to part three which is page 360 something like that so yeah now I'm just gonna go and make some dinner <laughs> This is literally what I get every time I come into the library. Usually the whole seat is covered, but I just have to manhandle this one out of the way. Hey. Hey. 
boy. I'm gonna read some more of this. So I got to page 305 last time and I think I want to try and get to part three which is yeah here 360 so let's go <laughs> guys so it's literally just gone midnight I think so I am going to call it a day here and go to bed um I'm just cuddling in with this one again he's my little shadow um I actually got to where I wanted to in the paying guests so I have reached the what was it 360 page mark um, so yeah I think the big twist has happened now um, definitely ramping up in terms of plot and intrigue so yeah very exciting and if I wasn't so tired I would definitely keep reading um, yeah I'm really loving this now so I'm gonna read that tomorrow and it's actually the last day of March tomorrow, so I'm hoping that I can finish that one so that that nicely rounds off the month. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but I like to finish my books in line with the month's finishing. Um, yeah, and then that means that I need to set my April TBR and set up my bullet journal tomorrow, so yeah, it's going to be a good maybe I'll vlog tomorrow again as well okay well thank you so much for watching today and I'll maybe see you tomorrow bye